Analyze Podcast. Analyze Podcast. Kyle here with... With Dimitri. That's all you get today. Just the two of us. Like old times. As Pierre would say, I'm back. I don't even know what you would call this. Would you call this modern age comics Tumblr days? <laughs> Maybe. I was just thinking about that the other day. I had like one post that did like 10,000. It was like high up there, but it was Black Widow. It was hyper realistic. It was a lot was cool. of that with Tumblr. Remember we had Fan Art Fridays. We would schedule Fan Art and we actually would credit people. We would go on DeviantArt, find their work, credit them, and schedule it all Friday. You know, I think I did that. Today's episode is a mixed bag of fun stuff. First, let's do some news. Scarlett Johansson confirms her secret MCU project is still in the works. Did you know she had one? I think it was after, like, the settlement. Oh, because they owe her one? I guess. But how would that make sense? She did her prequel. Maybe she it's died. nothing to do with the MCU. Like, you know how, like, Chris Hemsworth has, like, the fitness nature one? The rumor news says MCU, but you're correct. It could be. The only other idea, I don't know how they'd make work, but they could make work would just be adding her to Secret Wars, right? My assumption is Secret Wars is just everyone ever is Boiler, in that movie. It's not. But why not? It's everyone's leaving. Everyone's getting no. arrested. Everything's falling apart. No. They're casting people and they're just quitting before they even get the role. Did anyone think they were going to keep using Namor? I thought so. But do they need him? Exactly. He would have been cool as a Fantastic Four villain. They had to burn that one. And I think they have an opportunity to fix that, which I think they should with uh, Black Panther to mm. just like throw a new Black Panther in the mix from a new... Listen, I'm not the biggest Shuri fan, but I don't know if they should just take it from her before she wears the suit for more than three minutes. I think they can make it work multiversally. Wesley Snipes. Oh. No. <laughs> Wait a second. Why not? Well, that was what? rumored and there was a script years and years and years ago or something with him i don't know if it was before or after play to be honest you don't even have to use it just use it real quick and yeah but not more than a cameo he's the originator he birthed everything he deserves a spotlight big movie yeah cameo but like more spider-man 4 has been delayed shocker and it's more of an on hold because they haven't started it i guess is the right way to say it is shocker gonna be in it technically we already had shocker he was working for vulture and then he got killed and then someone else took the gauntlets oh that's right i think the on hold situation is partially due to tom holland's taking some time off yeah because that show which bombed apparently yeah no one's loving it tom holland also said in an interview that if the next spider-man movie is not better than the last Spider-Man movie. So maybe that's all part of it too. Like maybe there's disagreement on the script or they're trying to honor that. DC stuff. There's more Spider-Man news I can say first actually. It's not really news. Pierre sent it to me. So who knows if it's true. Dr. Morgan Michaels is an alias for Dr. Michael Morbius. That name and character is seen in the first Spider-Man game. Oh. And there's actually a picture that I will clip in somewhere here. But that's interesting. So maybe we'll get a Morbius in the Spider-Man 2. I think they have to. Maybe Craven hunts him first. They have to extend the villain pool for a sequel, similar to how, what was it, Arkham Asylum did? Yeah. Everyone was in Arkham Asylum. They have to go all the way with it. And it'll be interesting because I assume some of these will be the first interactions with Miles. That's a good point. I don't think the Lizard has interacted with Miles. I'm trying to think what other villain hasn't interacted with Miles. So that's an interesting research tidbit. project. Get back yeah. to us next episode and give us a full detailed list. Sure thing. I can do that. A Suicide Squad anime called Suicide Squad Isekai starring the Joker and Harley Quinn and Amanda Waller being brought to us by Wit Studios, best known for Attack on Titan. It has a very, very short teaser. I'm uh, very interested to check it out. Now, I don't know if the teaser is just showing us Joker and Harley Quinn, but it appears to be focusing on them. Joker looks perfect. Harley Quinn is kind of movie similar. So I guess a question would be going forward. I think we're going to get a lot more of this. We're going to get a lot more of like, how do I put this? Because we have multiple instances of Superman right now. And they're about to do like an animated show. They have the Superman and Lois show. That's it's about ending. to go on their fourth season. And they're about to do a movie. And I'm sure they have a comic going on right now. And I'm pretty sure they're doing the same with Batman. They're just technically whoring out Batman. Yeah. That should be the formula going forward. It gets one of everything. Like, whore them out. No, it's true. Superman and Batman should and appear to be getting one of every form of media. Yeah, I like it. So let's talk about Secret Invasion Episode 3 a little bit. Lackluster, for sure. Well, that's not good. Some scrolls got shot. Okay. Some scrolls died. Do we know them? We knew one of them. Now, 
I'm going to say spoiler, but I'm pretty sure the scroll that died did in fact die for the fact that when scrolls seem to get shot in human form, when they turn back to scroll form, that's like almost the confirmation that they're gone. The Queen of Dragons got shot. No way. And turned into a scroll, like back to her normal form. Could this be not the case? And just getting that hurt? You can't hold your form? Sure. But if they actually kill her off, it's like, what are they doing? Like you introduce us and are building this new character and you take her away, you know? So I can't imagine. I'm going to say it's bullshit and she's going to somehow get saved. But yeah, so that's the thing. And then, you know, they're throwing around the word Super Scrolls, which is mildly disappointing because it's not the Super Scroll. It's Super Scrolls. And as we saw in episode two, they are hinting at what powers they're going to get from a trailer. We did see Gravik getting a tentacle wooden arm. So we know he's going to get group powers. So he's trying to build a Super Scroll army rather than a Super Soldier army. And it's basically just whatever powers they can get. I'm sure they'll explain it more, but that's a thing. Nick Fury's wife, she might be a traitor, but I'm sure that's a bait and switch in an uncreative way. And yeah, it's kind of lackluster. My big two questions from the episode and anyone who wants to chime in and comment their thoughts, I'd much appreciate it. Is Gravik already a super scroll? Because in one point, Talos stabs him in the hand with a fork and kind of rips his hand apart. His hand glows and goes back together. Is that a scroll power or is that a super scroll power? Sounds like a super scroll power. It seems like although they're very strong, they don't do very good against bullets or wounds. Not sure why he would just heal up. I'm guessing he's got somebody's power. I don't know whose that would be though, is my next question. It glowed yellow and just healed right up. Who would that be? I'd have to see the list. Yeah. So I don't know how I feel about that. They shapeshift, but have no sense to know if someone shapeshifted. Oh, so they don't know if they're talking to another scroll? It doesn't appear that way. Unless it's just like they have to like get really close and like there's some tell for them, but like at a short distance, they have no clue. The only thing they could do right now is just shapeshift. And then those machines are letting them take the memory, so they're one step further shapeshifting their able to take the role of somebody and now this new okay. machine will give them random powers apparently but i don't know i'm not impressed with this show as a whole it's going from a 7 out of 10 to a solid 6 out of 10 as a whole so far it's not very exciting you'd wonder if they would just be better off doing like straight to disney plus movies i think they should have cut all the talking parts and just amped this up as a movie and just made it like high stakes yeah just like extra fluff for no reason yeah I mean, the one scene I kind of liked where they infiltrated to stop the scroll imposter from, like, letting a nuke off, that kind of dialogue was pretty good, like, getting up to that point. But generally, the dialogue's been just flat. You know, like, you can have shows that are mostly talking, and they're more entertaining than, like, this shape-shifting espionage show. It's just not very exciting. And yeah, I'm going to keep watching it. I don't know if I'm going to keep watching it on release day. Might get pushed aside. I'm sure next week they'll do something so outrageous. Rages has such a big cameo that they pull everyone back in. Isn't it normally like episode four is always like the good one? Like that's like their formula is building up to like the fourth episode, even with like Mandalorian. I think they did it with She-Hulk too. All right. So we're going to do a quick little segment that Pierre came up with called Pull or Pass. Obviously, it's only two of us and only I read something. So still notable if we read things, I want to share and maybe save people some money or you know, direct them with our very valuable opinions. So I read Green Lantern number one. I wanted to read Green Lantern for some reason. I like purposely sought it out and I was like, oh, it's actually a rather new run. Like it's not that much catching up. So I read it. It's a pass. (laughs) I didn't like any of the direction. I would say if you've never read Green Lantern before, it's probably the best or worst place to start. It is almost like here he is at his worst, which is how he was before he got the ring. Here's another Hal Jordan story. Crashing planes and being a rebel and just not overall being a very great person. And like he doesn't have his ring. I mean, the one interesting part for some spoilers is that there was a villain that got like a Manhunter armor, I guess you would call it. It was like terrorizing the city and he went and fought him without a ring. So obviously there's a lot I don't know. I just really am not liking Hal Jordan's personality in this. It's hard to read, especially knowing any other Green Lantern story. Like all the crap he's been through, it's hard to see him like this. And then there was an after story with Jon Stewart by Philip Kennedy Johnson, which was tremendously better. 
but didn't get to where it needed to. I guess they limited him and it's just like a tease for whatever he's going to work on with him. But as a tease, like they didn't tease it right. It just wasn't enough to get to whatever point he was trying to get to. So overall, I say pass for Green Lantern. Now, if you're a big Green Lantern fan, obviously give it more than one issue. I'm done. The next one was Marauders number one. So I did DC and I did a Marvel. Marauders number one is like the third number one. They're back to a number one. That's crazy. Yeah, it's also six or seven issues already out. But I really like the last series. I think I read all of it to an entirety. So I kind of felt like this was like my continuing point. It was okay. I didn't really dislike it or like it. I think I'll keep reading it for a bit just to see where it goes. Part of me is like partial to Kitty Pride. Like I like that character a lot. So maybe that's why I'm giving it a pull. But if you're not like an X-Men fan or a Kitty Pride fan or an extended character X-Men fan, you only like the ones you can name. It might be a pass for you. I would say this is a borderline pass, but I will pull just because of my own investment. Great. And that is what I read this week. The other thing I did was read a preview of Snicket, which is a manga that I think came out, I don't know, 10, 20 years ago. I don't know. It came out a while ago, but they're reformatting it and re-releasing it. So I read the first few pages of that. I might look into that as a story. It's a what if Wolverine ended up in this apocalyptic, robotic, murderous world and he just slaughters everything. It's more about the art than the dialogue, apparently. But that's something to check out if you're a Wolverine fan, if you've never heard of that before. Now, are you ready for the rumors? Let me fix my body. All right. Fix your body. Get it ready. Because I got some rumors for you. I'm rumor ready. Okoye is rumored to be a scroll and was a scroll at the end of Black Panther Wakanda Forever. Could it still be? Sure. Why? I don't know. What story would it possibly move forward? I have no idea. But that is a rumor. Did someone just make that up? Probably. But I saw it, and I thought it was worth sharing. Next rumor. Margot Robbie and Adam Driver reported to have turned down Fantastic Four. Invisible Woman has been offered to Vanessa Kirby. I didn't know who it was either, but if you Google her, she's recognizable. She's done like Fast and Furious, that spinoff Hobbs one, a few other things, a Mission Impossible. She's fine, I guess. I feel like that part of the rumors, the most true part, had a little more credibility than Margot Robbie saying no. The script for Deadpool 3 has been leaked. Now, I'm not going to have Pierre read the whole script like he did that one time and then was very close and kind of ruined a movie for us. But I'll tell you this. They're calling it the live action version of House of M. And Scarlet Witch is rumored to be the main villain. Obviously, if it's House of M, she would be the main villain. But Deadpool being the protagonist of a House of M is interesting. I don't really know if that works. And with that, Ben Affleck is supposed to cameo in that movie as Daredevil. Cool. Yeah. Overall, they're kind of hinting from all these leaks and rumors about Deadpool that it's going to be a very big multiverse movie. Like, more than expected in kind of like a meta, funny kind of way. Almost poking fun at what we're dealing with in basically every science fiction right now. That's what they should put the Blade in. There you go. There's your Blade cameo, or him as Black Panther. Anyway, Benedict Cumberbatch is rumored to return for an MCU movie that is set to start filming next year. So maybe he'll get a follow-up to his multiverse movie and we'll actually get something about the incursions. Maybe it'll be something straight up called Illuminati, although I saw a rumor that the Illuminati is a big part of Secret Wars. Like That movie revolves around that group a lot. Now, my last rumor before we get to a major leak, it is stated that the Marvels, all the leaks we said, all of them, about the after credit scene, Young Avengers set up and all that, it is rumored that that leak is false. And then as far as leaks do go, this one's not included in the one that I just said was false, but a new Marvels leak that's not false apparently captain marvel has a husband called prince yon and he is the leader of a musical planet and we know this because apparently there's like a toy of him so like part of the story is like she got married to some dude for peaceful purposes so when she went away she wasn't just away fixing stuff she went away to like get husband who could tom cruise be in the dcu it's a very good one can i tell you mine first so I so strongly want Green Lantern to be Jon Stewart. I want him to be our main Green Lantern, and then he could pass the torch or the focus, right? He doesn't have to give up his ring or anything, but pass the focus to some of the newer ones that are floating around right now. But wouldn't Tom Cruise, especially because of his Top Gun past, be a great Hal Jordan, like a veteran Hal Jordan that's already experienced some really heavy space shit, and he's kind of like the older guy in the room who's experienced... Yeah. And a little bitter. Isn't there a one older than him? There's Alan Scott, but it's a little different. 
and I strongly feel they're going to skip that character. And if they do use that character, I would love to see that in an Earth 2 format and follow that storyline for him. Yeah, I got nothing yet. My first initial thought would have been a Lex Luthor. I think I just have some fatigue with trying to pick a Lex Luthor and just generally the character, to be honest. So... The Lois and Clark, I haven't watched it, but I saw like the clips of the finale. That version of Lex Luthor, so fucking good. I think arguably not as good as the Doomsday version that they had Bizarro turn into. Spoilers. How sick was that? Very acceptable CGI considering the budget of a show that technically got canceled. Like they know an end is near and they still produce something like that with a strict budget. I just love that they went just full on like crazy with it. And that show's dealt with stuff from like having to recast one of the super kids almost getting canceled, the CW falling apart completely. Like it's dealt with some stuff and it's still very favored. I believe it's probably better than Smallville. Oh, speaking of Smallville, what was that actress that went to jail? Allison Mack. She's being released. Really? Yeah. So that was some good news. Let's end this episode on that <laughs> great news. <laughs> Paddling's podcast. Paddling's podcast. Give us 10 years to like get over all of it and then just full reboot all of it and learn from all the mistakes and, you know, do more traditional. Have Wasp be an original member of the Avengers, you know, like just really follow the comics and that path, especially because they'll own everything by then. There'll be nothing holding them back. Brand new actors, you know, Chris Evans could be the Stan Lee cameo, like just complete fresh.